Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we're talking today about warnings against pride. We're getting this message from Life of Assembly, London, and from the Child of God, Kamai Ochukwachu. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. Before you, there is no God. After you, there is no other God. You are the greatest lover. You are our protector. You are our provider. Before you, there is no other God. After you, there is no other God. Father, please, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us to know how to serve you better. Teach us to understand you better. Help us to understand your ways. Help us to know how to please you, O oh God. Help us to know how to love you. Help us to know how to tolerate each other. Father, give us multiculturalism. Give us tolerance. Give us patience. Give us understanding. Give us benevolence. Put it in our hearts, Papa. We desire to tolerate, to forgive, to promote all that please you. And make the world a better place, O oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray that you give us a heart as well to forgive those who offended us. Because every day we are offended as we offend. Help us, Papa, to imbibe that trait of forgiveness. Help us not to put people into bondage again. Help us to begin to free those that are in bondage, mental, spiritual, psychological, economical, political, those that have been put in bondage by the cultists, by the ritualists, you know, by the evil men and women, Papa. Those that refuse to obey you, those that made it their job to pull others down, to put others into bondage, those whose primary job is economic exploitation, you know, to put other people down, to destroy, to kill, and to steal and to rob. Father, protect us from these ones in Jesus' name. Protect us from this beast in human uniform, beast of body, these destroyers. Protect us from the greedy. These political jobbers that put us in bondage, these terrorists, these assassins, these murderers, protect us from these sadists, these sociopaths and psychopaths, protect us in political uniforms, protect us from them, oh God. These immune rapists, you know, those that destroy people's talents, those that take people's properties, those that rob at gunpoint, those that confuse, protect us from them, oh God, and give us proper equanimity, give us peace, give us serenity. Give us tranquility, O oh God, and let all this glorify your name now forevermore in Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful Jehovah, excellent Jehovah, thank you for bringing us into this blessed and powerful day, 7th day of March 2021. Thank you for the weather in London today. Thank you in Asia, Australia, America, Europe, other parts of Europe and Africa. Thank you for your blessedness. Thank you for making us alive in the land of the living. Thank you for your healing power that's upon us. Thank you for removing the mark of death put upon our lives. Thank you for making the assassins to repent. Thank you for making the terrorists to repent. Thank you for make, making the corrupt to repent. Thank you for making the murderers to repent. Thank you, Papa, for making the cheat to repent, Papa. Those that are unfaithful to humanity and divinity, thank you for giving them power, the chance to repent. Blessed be your holy name, my God in battle. For you are the greatest, for you are the holiest, the most awesome, the most powerful. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are Holy of Holies, you are ancient of days. You are the one that is teaching us gradually how to understand you, how to serve you better, how to appreciate your love, how to appreciate your beauty, how to appreciate your own culture. You are the one that called us, you are the one that made us, you are the one that protests and provides for us. You are the one whom everyone look up to, Papa. You are stronger than day and night. Life and death are scared of you. Only you know how you began, who you are, what you are, where you are, how you are, where you are. You only God. Everything we give you is a title. Yes. Everything we think about is just out of your imagination. You are the greatest of 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 all authorities. You are the greatest God. There is none like you. Thank you, I am, I am. Thank you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. 
glory, honor, power, and adoration be unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Papa, for you are the one that wiped away Sarah's tears. You wiped away our tears in Jesus' name. You are the one that wiped away Hannah's tears. You wiped away our tears in Jesus' name. You are the one that changed Saul to Paul. You will change, Papa, all the evil among us into good in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. You are the one that understands. You are the one that protects. You are the one that David called up and you saved him from his enemies. You will save us from our enemies in Jesus' name. Pray, amen. You are the God our ancestors called. You are holy of holies. He will chew holy of holies, ancient of days, covenant keeping God. That I am that I am. Alpha and Omega, mighty God in battle, the God that created us and endowed us with wisdom, humility, understanding, tolerance, and acceptance, irrespective of the pollution of moralities. Help us, Papa, to go back to our roots, to accept you, Papa, as the one and only God, and begin to obey you, begin to bow down before you, begin to worship you through the Spirit, that your name and your name alone may be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, wonderful God, powerful God, excellent God, glorious God. Thank you for those that have robbed us, Papa. We are rich than them. Thank you for those that have stolen from us. We are more mature than them. But give us the heart to forgive them. Give us the heart to you know to be to, to protect us from our vulnerabilities. Those things that we do that give them room to exploit us. Help us to patch up, Papa, and cover up. So that they will have rooms to be stealing from us again in Jesus' precious name. Amazing God, we love you. Powerful God, we love you. We celebrate your creations. We celebrate your holiness. We celebrate your talents. We are because you are, Papa. You are the greatest. You are the kindest. You are the most wonderful. You most excellent. You are the most glorious. To you and to you alone be all the glory for all we have done in life of our assembly, for all we are doing now. For we continue to do in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Glory, honor, power, and adoration that be unto your name, O God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing a little song before we begin to have this teaching. Be down, exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be down, exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Let your glory be above all the heavens. Let your glory be above all the heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all our problems. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above our weaknesses. Let your glory be above all oh, that and let your glory be above all that and be thou exalted, O oh Lord, above all our problems. Be thou exalted, O oh Lord, above our enemies. Let your glory be above. Oh, the end. Let your glory be above oh, the end. Oh, Ebenezer. Oh, Ebenezer. Oh, we worship you, our Father. Oh, Ebenezer. Oh, we worship you, Adonai. Oh, Benizam, hallelujah. Oh, Benizam. Oh, Benizam. Oh, we worship you, our creator. Oh, Benizam. Oh, we worship you, Adonai. Oh, Benizam. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Before we go into the warnings against pride, it's very vital that we understand that pride creates self-exaltation and a desire to be honored. This is wrong, according to the Bible. Yeah. When we seek to be pleased, we are trying to displease the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pride makes us think that we are wise. <laughs> Pride gives sin, I know it all attitude. Don't teach me. What can you tell me? I know it all. 
Hmm? Pride causes arguments. I want us to know that pride corrupts us. Very, very important that we appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Pride brings about our downfall. May God help us to assimilate these purposes in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us go. Pride creates self exaltation and desire to be honored. Look at the arrogant. They just want to be honored. They want to give them titles. They want to notify them, you know, notice, notice them when they're coming. They want to be notified of any development and all those things. They prefer to be served, not to serve, as a sign of pride and arrogance. Proverbs 25, verse 27 says, For men to search their own glory is not glory. You don't need to search, your, search for your own glory. If there's anything like glory, give it to Almighty God. If there's anything like honor, give it to God. Praise the Lord. Only this God deserves it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 23, verse 5 and 7 says, Proud Pharisees, they love greetings in public and to be called men and masters. Look at those people that want to be tied to chief professor, doctor, you know, this. They will tell you that they, they, they try to take all the titles. They will tell you to call them heaven, call them earth. They're advertising their impotence. They're trying to add artificial importance to their status. If just humble yourself and God will elevate you. If there's anything like glory or honor, let it go to Almighty God. May God give you the grace to begin to worship him in truth and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark 12, 38 and 39 says, Scribes love chief seats and uppermost rooms. When they come, they want you to exalt them. They want to be identified. They want everyone to know they are there. Let your work advertise you. Don't, don't say this is who I am. Give people the room. Make them become inquisitive. Let them find that your real essence, your real nature. The sun does not beg to shine. It simply shines. And those that see the glory of this shining, you know, begin to call it the sun. The rain does not beg to fall. It simply falls. It gets on with the duty. It gets on with the activities. And those that appreciate the blessedness, you know, in the rain, begin to call it rainfall. The day does not beg to just come. The day simply continues. Yeah. And people that appreciate the bless blessings in the day call it, you know, that they, they turn around and say that this is day. The clock, you know, does not beg you to tick. It just continues ticking. And you would appreciate, observes, and cause, you know, says this is part of this is the reflection of the time. Praise the Lord. So at the end of the day, I want you to talk less and act more. Talk less and act more. And the glory of God shall continuously be yours in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 When you seek to please men, we often displease the Lord. Yes. First Samuel 15, verse 30 it says, I've sinned, but honor me before the people. You have sinned and you expect honor. That's counterproductive. That's imbecilic and atrocious. When you sin, I expect you to humble yourself. Ask for forgiveness, accept responsibility. Ask for the Lord to forgive you. Then when you are forgiven, be grateful that you are forgiven. Then get on with life. Get on with the dictates of destiny, purpose. Imagination is a place, is lovely. But then don't corrupt your imagination with criminalities. Yes, then we are inundated with family problems and all those things. Friendly things are where we shall. So many life is full of challenges. But don't let these things bring pride to you because God has chosen to use it to solve them. Remember, everything you have is a gift. Husband, wife, brother, sister, children, property, everything you have, talent, wisdom, that all gift. Even your years and your time, your name, who you are, what you are, when you are, how you are, everything you have is a gift. So serve graciously, serve faithfully, serve humbly, serve selflessly, serve tenaciously. Don't give the glory to yourself. You are called to serve in truth and spirit. May God help us as we appreciate this in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. John 5 verse 44 says, Ye receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. 
You want to be praised, you want to be called, given titles. We will feel on the floor. A balance. A go back. A go This is one. They want to be given different, different names, different titles. On one eighty Laura. You forgot that all these titles are meant for all my regard. All these titles are meant for all my regard. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's shaking our glory. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's I am that I am. He's Alpha, he's Omega. He's holy of holies, he's ancient of days. He's mother to the motherless, his father to the fatherless. He's parent to the orphan. He's the hope to the hopeless. He's home to the homeless. He's permit to the permitless. He's job to the jobless. He's child to the childless. He's your comforter when you're lonely. He's your provider. He's your protector. He's your elevator. He's your creator. He's your maker. He's your mentor. He's your director. He's your radiator in the winter of life. He calms you down. He's your moderator. Omnipotent God, omnipresent God, omniscience God. Change your mind. After when you tell no man can see you, what you about to know? Olori he da ilum. Oti budi di anira guya. Oti mbodombo. Holy of holies. Olua ye ranka dede. Holy of holies. He's my maker. He's my mentor. He loves you. He loves me. Let us give God the glory. Due to all my regard, I will continue to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John 12 and 43 says, The love praise of men more than the praise of God. That's a sign of pride, sign of arrogance. They love to be praised by men more than by God. Do those things quietly and walk away. Quietly, God knows how to pay you. He understands. There's a book written for you. There's a book where your daily activities are, you know, recorded. You must get praised by men. If they recognize it, fine. If they don't, just get on with the job. Move on. It's very, very important that you realize the source of your authority, the source of your power. By doing that, you'll be humbled. Even as God is glorified in your humility. In Jesus' name, amen. Galatians 1 verse 10. The book of Galatians 1 verse 10 says, If I please men, not be the servant of Christ. If your primary intention, motive, or purpose is to please men and not God, then <laughs> you're endangering your spirituality, you're endangering your calling, your talent, your holiness, you're endangering you know, your essence. If you choose to please men, I don't think you'll be a servant of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are many Jesuses, but the Jesus I'm talking about is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The one that cried, a lie, a lie. Abba Sabatani. A lie, a lie. Abba Sabatani. My God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Humility. A lie, a lie. So it's very, very important that we begin to appreciate our weaknesses, appreciate our purpose, appreciate you know, our strength as well. Begin to give out our best and be willing to die empty. May Almighty God deliver us, even as we cocade the habit of humility in Jesus' precious name. Pray the best us think we are wise. He that doesn't know and doesn't know that he doesn't know is a fool. So people don't know. And they don't know that they don't know. That's why we call them foolish. <laughs> Pride makes us think we are wise. Proverbs 3 verse 7. The book of Proverbs 3 verse 7 says, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Servant of God. Fear the Lord. Fear Almighty God. What is fear here? Fear means to obey Almighty God. Obey Jehovah Elohim. Obey Jehovah Adonai. Obey I am that I am. Obey Jehovah Ehashamayim. He has never deceived. He's not deceived and he will never deceive you. He loves you, he pampers you, protects you. He's the reason why you were, why you are, why you will be. Glory be to his name in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First Corinthians 3, 18 says, Let no man deceive himself, if any, seem wise. Stop deceiving yourself. On your own, you can do nothing. Everything you have is a gift, is endowment. Even that God is using to help others. I appreciate God for even being found world to use to help others. Some of us that are teaching, some of us that feel that we are dudes, like 
We are sages. So what I think we are wise and not we are gifted and talented and anointed. We should always be aware of pride. We should always be aware of anger and the vicissitudes that comes from the calling. Because there are so many temptations that come from these callings. Sometimes you're tempted to be you know, arrogant, to be pompous, to be necessarily angry, to intimidate, to bully and all those backbite, hate. When you're doing all this, you think the power comes from you. That means you're gradually forgetting the source of your authority, the source of your spirituality, the source of your anointing, the source of your prophetic calling or prophetic dispositions. Humble yourself. Keep the source in view always. Don't forget the source of your authority. Don't forget that there's a giver that gave you this gift, which you express, which you exercise. As we do this, may the glory go to God in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3, 18 says, Let no man deceive himself, if any, seems wise. Yes? 1 Corinthians 8, verse 2 says, If anything that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing. Yet, as he ought to know. <laughs> All that I know is that I know nothing. All that I understand is I understand nothing. When I look at the Milky Way galaxy, the multiverse, the universe, I look at the stars, the sun, you know? I look at the grave. I look at the smiles on the face of babies. I look at people's problems which God is using me to solve and do different things, including mine. When I look at the past, present, and future, when I look at the insecurity before us, the inanity, the insanity, the madness, the vanity, I just realize that life is larger than logic. We are slaves to purposes. We are slaves to higher purposes. We are slaves to higher decisions. But what are we expected to do? We are expected to make peace with our destinies and try to put in our best. We didn't ask to be created. We are not considered for being created. We didn't even ask to be given our names. We didn't ask to choose our sexuality, our sex and all those things. We didn't ask to come from that tribe, that culture, that part of the world. These are decisions of other people. These are by, we are byproducts of external decisions. So we should be very humble and be very modest and moderate in our activities and our relationships. As we are doing this, God is taking the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray and give us, I know it all attitude. <laughs> Psalm 131 verse 1 says, They halt exercise themselves in great matters, in things too high for them. When people open their mouth to talk, you understand their mentality, their mindset, their perception of realities. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth to speak it. I keep telling people, both people in this church and other places, people that are viewers of this program, I keep telling people, you can't forget what you don't know. You can't give what you don't have. You can only remember what you, you know. What you, what, 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 what you know, what you had experienced in the past, yeah? You can only give what you have to so give out the love in you. Give out the blessedness in you. Give out the generosity in you. Give out the cheerfulness. Give out the wisdom in you. Give out the encouragement in you. Give out the humility in you. Give out the most sensible in you. Give out your all cheerfully and be willing to die empty and all my God be glorified for your sake. May this and many more blessings be our portion in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Above all, remember, it's better to be a servant in heaven than to be a chief in hell. The graveyard is filled with unused talents. It's filled with regrets. It's filled, you know, with silence. The noisy silence in the graveyard is deafening. The voice of silence speaks. But those who only listen with the ears hears nothing. The voice of silence speaks. Those who only listen with the ears hears nothing. May God help us to begin to hear with more than the ear. May God open our you know, spiritual eyes for us to begin to see. As we look, everyone looks, but only few, few see. Yeah. Everyone listens, but only few hear. That's true. Everyone is blessed with mind, but only few think. Only few understand the utility of reasoning and dialogue. May God help us to appreciate this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I get down to Proverbs 26, verse 12. 
It says, See as that a man wise in his own conceit, there is more hope of a fool than of him. They are fooling themselves and they are fooling others. They are deceiving themselves and they are deceiving others. The book of Psalm 26, verse 12 says, There is more hope for a fool than self deceivers. People that think they are wise in their own ways. People that, you know, glorify their arrogance, their insolence. People that institutionalize their maladies. People that institutionalize corruption. People that institutionalize hypocrisy. They think they are wise. They think they are smart. You are cheating others. You are hurting people. You are taking advantage of them. You are stealing their resources. You are cheating on them. And you think you are smart. The Bible says there is more hope for a fool to be liberated, to be delivered, to have salvation than for such. May God deliver as many as are indulging in this. In Jesus' name we pray, man. Self-deception is very, very deadly. Avoid it. And God will help you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pride causes arguments. Every time, quarrel some talkativeness. Proverbs 13 verse 10 says, Only by pride come at contention. Don't look at anywhere you see strife. Anywhere you see contention. Go deeper, deeper, deeper to the root of this problem. It's pride. It must be me. Why, why, you know, why not this? Why am I not, why am I not looked upon? Why am I not respected? Why? You don't demand respect. You earn it. Don't force people to respect you. You earn it. Don't force people to talk good about you. You earn it. Bible says by their fruits you shall know them. Praise the Lord. Sometimes don't talk. Because when you don't talk, people think you're wise. But when you open up your mind, you remove every doubt. Then people think you're foolish. Sometimes people look at you, they assume that you're wise. But when you open up your mouth to begin to pour out the, the silliness in you, you remove every doubt. So sometimes if you really don't have anything good to say, shut up, don't talk, keep quiet. May God give us the grace to know when to talk, to know when to act, and to know when to react. In Jesus' name we pray, man. When you push so many people to the wall, some respond, others react. So I want you to learn how to respond. Begin to respond, don't react. When you respond to issues, that means you're being refined, you're being modest, you're being moderate. But when you react, that means you're being aggressive, you're being unjust, you're being unfaithful, you're being basically and atrocious, and always leads to counterproductiveness. You're counterproductive to the ethics of benevolence, to egalitarianism, to munificence, to benevolence. May God help us to appreciate you know, the motive of our creation and begin to put in our best toward realization of, you know, our salvation in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Proverbs 28 verse 25 says, He that is of a proud heart started of strife. Look at that person that always want to quarrel, quarrel, quarrel. Take a look at the life of that person. They like strife. They can't survive without conflict. They flourish in conflict. When other people are sad, that's when they're angry. They have unforgiving spirit. They are very vengeful. They like to retaliate. Even if it takes years, they must retaliate. They remember people, they get sad. Vengeance is a branch of pride. It's a branch of arrogance. You are forgiven, so you should forgive. You are blessed, so you should bless. You are tolerated, so you should tolerate. You are forgiven, so you have to forgive. There's nothing anybody has done to you which people have not done to other people. There's nothing you're passing through which people have not passed through before. Today is warnings about what? Pride. I'll still get our topic. I just need to crack these knots before getting to the men. The men elixir, yeah. The nucleus of what we're talking about, the center, the focus point. May God help us in Jesus. Pray. Pride corrupts us. Pride corrupts. Yes, pride corrupts. Mark 7, 22 and 23 says, Pride comes from within and defies the man. Pride defies you. You're created holy. You're born holy. But as you grow and begin to get pollution from environmental forces, pride is one of those things that pollutes your glory. It corrupts your intentions. It corrupts, it corrupts your sanity. It's very, very corrosive. It's acidic. Yes. Just like the way you pour acid on people and on this, and they begin to corrode, become corrosive, begin to destroy, begin to eat it up. So pride eats up your essence, your glory, your culture, your love, your beauty, your benevolence. Pride eats up your anointing. Avoid pride. 
servant of God, dear sister, dear brother, dear brethren, avoid pride. It destroys. It defies your sanity. It defies your mentality. It pollutes your perception of realities. It makes you selfish. It makes you egocentric. It hinders your glory. It cups your wing as an ego. You're supposed to fly, but you know, fly into glory, fly into blessedness. But pride cups your wing, it makes you not to soar. It makes you the ego to operate like a chick. It makes you a prey to vanity and inanity and insanity. May God deliver us as we appreciate the inundations of pride and arrogance and vengeance and insolence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and an altar spirit before a fall. Pride goeth before destruction. Look at the proud. They always end up crashing, especially from the pinnacle or apex of their glory. Avoid pride. It's destructive. It's deadly. Proverbs 11 verse 2 says, When pride cometh, then cometh shame. The downfall of a man is not the end of his life. It's not how many times you fall in that matter, but how many times you refuse to rise. You are allowed to fall as many times as you, as you can, but still, you are expected to rise up again because it's not over until you win. It's not over until you cross the last line of salvation and we are welcome into you know, eternal glory, divine glory, prepare for us. It's not over until we get that crown of life eternally. May God help us to run this race to the end and lead others to run the race to the end as well. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Proverbs 18 verse 12. Proverbs 18 verse 12. Yeah. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Whenever you see pride and arrogance coming, see that the end of somebody is coming near. Pride is in the mind of the robber, the killer, the sadist, the psychopath, sociopath. Do that, you know, their lives are devoid of empathy. May the glory of God give us humility that we overcome sadism. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Proverbs 29 verse 23 says, A man's pride shall bring him low. A man's pride shall bring him low. If you really want to be honored, then humble yourself. When that humility grows in value, your respect will come. But when you demand respect, then you lose the little one you have already. Don't demand respect. Please fight and do everything you can to earn it. Earn it. Work for it. Work hard for it. Respect should be earned, not demanded. May God help us to utilize the values of moral upliftment in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. As there is evolution of consciousness, I expect us to imbibe multiculturalism. I expect us to embrace those principles, those ethics, you know, that are fundamental to our nature. They need to share, they need to care, they need to look after each other, they need to celebrate our talents, they need to encourage others. They need to protect, you know, lives, health, wealth, you know. They need to overcome malevolent tendencies. They need to celebrate our benevolence. They need to look after each other, look after the weak and vulnerable among us. They need to look after the children and the aged and the women, the sick among us. They need to educate the ignorant. Yes, and look after those that have disabilities among us. They didn't create themselves. They just found themselves with those, you know, disabilities. We shouldn't see them as, the, as unwanted. We should embrace them. We should look after them. Society's mentality is actually mentioned by how it looks after the welfare of the vulnerable and the weakest among us. So may God help us to begin to protect our own, to look after our own, irrespective of the disabilities afflicting us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Ezekiel 28, 2 and 17 says, The fall of Satan happened because he exalted himself. The great Satan that was chased out of heaven. <laughs> Powerful angel. But pride is trying to appropriate God's authority. He's trying to exceed the boundary given to, <laughs> to him. Or her, whoever this Satan is. 
Understand your limitations as a man. Understand your limitations as a woman. Understand the rubrics. Understand the bucolics. Don't cross the bridge and burn it. You always come back. Don't fight with a man, a woman that has what you need. Celebrate your talent when you're active. Look for the black sheep when the sun is still shining. Because when the night comes, you may find it difficult to see that black sheep. Save the best for the last. Live for the moment. Avoid pride. Avoid arrogance. Celebrate cheerfully. Look after those in need. And when you're in your own need, Almighty God will provide for you in Jesus' name. Prayer. Some of us have been pushed to the wall so that we can stay in our glory, so that we can denounce our faith. No. We are born into a challenge. We face a lot of challenges. We have a lot of faces to challenge. A beggar is better than a thief. A beggar is better than a robber. Better beg than rob, than to cheat, than to exploit people, than to take advantage of them. And this goes to some of us that are the altars of holiness. Be careful the way you treat people that come to you. Because most of them are vulnerable. Don't take advantage of their vulnerabilities. Single women, divorces, homeless, permitless, jobless, sick, dying, confused, lost, sinners that are brought to the altars of holiness for them to really have their mental sanitization and purification. Don't take advantage of them. Because every one of them, whatever you do with every one of them, you give account. Stop telling lies. It's better you beg than to say, Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. That's why I try to distance oneself from those exploiters, those spiritual fraudsters. I'll tell that God say, Bring ten thousand dollars, bring five thousand dollars, bring all those ones, empty your pocket, you know, into the altar at the coffin of the altars. No, those who are digging their own graves, ministry or union, mm. fraternity, mm. my have needs. Bring it out. People bring from their own heart to give out. Fine. Don't make it mandatory. When these contributions come, some people use them to live ostentatious lives, flamboyant lives. A ministry sanity mm -hmm. is known by the disposition of the worshippers by their spiritual growth. There are some people can't reconcile. They just want to learn. They want to worship. They feel that when they attend this service, when they participate in this program, they must learn something. You're feeding their spirits. That's what people go to business schools mm. to mm. understand the basics of making money. Some people attend churches. Some people attend conferences and seminars. Some people tune into programs like this you know, to get basic new guests of spirituality, holiness, sanity, to know how to live their life better, to know how to appreciate, to be appreciated better to know how to obey God better, to understand themselves, to know how to train their children better, to know how to dodge the arrows of life. That's the essence of this teaching. It's not about celebration, celebration. Yes, it's a kind of you know, promotion of that which is in you. It's about refinement, because most of us are born raw and crude. So teaching, education, learning, we are getting refined, mental refinement and all those things. Which husbands cannot, which wives cannot give, which brothers and sisters, which parents didn't give. That the essence of attending lectures or turning to programs like this. May God give us the blessings agreeable to those that partake in this kind of divine blessings in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Yeah, we are told that the fall of Satan happened because he exalted himself in pride. Let's take a look at um, Isaiah 14, 12 and 15. Isaiah 14. Yeah. Isaiah 14, 12 and 15 says, Satan fell because he exalted himself above what he was endowed with. He wants to take God's power. He wants to be a cute plotter. God have mercy in Jesus' name we pray. Man. Daniel 5, 18 and 20 says, God gave Nebuchadnezzar majesty and honor, but when his heart was lifted up, he was disposed. Nebuchadnezzar forgot the source of his glory, the source of his authority. And when he tried to mess up that authority, he was disgraced. May we not be Nebuchadnezzar in Jesus' name we pray, man. 
I've not really been seeing anybody since I was. I've not seen anybody call them their children in book and Nezi <laughs> or Satan. May God help us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar was arrogant. He was arrogant. He was arrogant. He provoked the glory of God. And his authority was violated. He was destroyed. He was disgraced. He was pulled out from the pinnacle of glory and put into the dustbin of life. Yes. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, him that thinketh he standeth, take it lest he fall. Yes. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, Be careful you that think you stand, lest you fall. The higher you go, the riskier it is for you to fall. When you fall from here, you might crash one leg, break one leg. If you fall from here, you might break your, break your neck. If you fall from there, their brother, their sister, you might end up dying. So the higher you go, the riskier it is for you to fall. The higher you go in spirituality, the riskier it is for you to fall. So guide your spirituality. Guide your salvation jealously. Guide your salvation jealously. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. What are the causes of pride? Some of them, some of us are arrogant because we think we are beautiful. Because of we have material abundance. Because we are being overly secured. Yes. Yeah. Because we are affected by exaltation. People are praising us now. We think we are somebody now. Some of us are carnal minded. We think they are intellectual pride. We think you know so much book. You have so much wisdom now. Yes. These things help to pull people down. That's why we are one against pride today. Beauty. It's Ezekiel 28 verse 17 says, Thy heart is lifted up because of thy beauty. Your heart is lifted up because of your beauty. Then you're preparing your own downfall. May God deliver us in Jesus. Then we pray. Man. Material abundance. So people feel God they have made money. They've achieved so much. And have mansion and building and cars and the flashy things of life. They begin to become pride. And that's when you see them crashing with those cars. Dying, overfeeding, they are kidding, their liver, their hearts are being destroyed, they are split. Because what is meant for 20 people to feed on, they feed on it alone. They, they endanger their system. Biodiversity is threatened. They pollute the environment they, and pollute their lives. And then they get early destruction. They cut their lifespan short. May God deliver us from all of these causes of pride in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. The rich fool say, now nah, I've got everything I want. And that night, God said, this night, your, your soul is demanded from you. I want your life. May we not be the rich fool in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we learn from other people's weaknesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Deuteronomy 8, 12 and 14 says, Lest when thou art full and thou hast, hast is mult multiplying, then thy heart be lifted up. Yes, lest when thou art full and all that thou hast is multiplying, then the heart be lifted up. So when they have more than their brother, their sister, they begin to get, do you know who I am? They begin to go, they begin to brag. They forgot that God is the source of every wealth. God gave it, God can take it in a twinkle of an eye. God gave life, God can take this life. God gave wife, God gave children, God gave all this in your boasting of, God can as well take them. You are born naked, you forgot. And naked shall you be when you're going. Some people, when they die, they will not even give you your favorite shoe, your favorite clothes. They may give you oversize. Yes, that your favorite belt or clothes. That may be the one the next brother or sister wants, or the wife or brother or wife or husband wife. So be very, very careful. You are born naked. Remember, remember, you are born naked and you shall go naked. You are born naked and sacred, but the world is making you wicked. Learn, learn to maintain your sacredness, avoid wickedness, so that you can end with blessedness. May God help us to appreciate this fast in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Some people say, I have permission now. I have this. I'm married, husband, wife. Everything is okay for me. They look at the next level. They have not got to what you've got. Then you look down on them. You begin to despise their spirituality. You begin to des despise their God given dignity. You begin to look down on them. You begin to call them names. You begin to think they are foolish because they have no opportunity to get what you've got. Be very, very careful. You that think you, you stand, lest you fall in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. When there's abundance of material things, be very, very careful. That's when more temptations come to you. Be very, very careful. That's when your faith will be tested more. Be very, very careful. You'll be tested with generosity. You'll be tested with so many things. People will mock you and all those. Be careful how you react when you're provoked. May God deliver us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Ezekiel 28 verse 5 says, Thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. When your riches increase, don't put your heart on them. Give glory to God. 
Don't worship your proper, don't worship materialism. Worship Almighty God, author and preacher of our faith, and it shall be well with you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hosea 13 verse 6. Hosea 13 verse 6 says, They were filled and their heart was exalted. They were filled up. Beware of gluten. Beware of the way you react when you feel that your needs have been met. When we are in need of something, we are desperate, we will make all our promises. But the remarkable nature is known in fulfillment, in abundance, in realization. When people have got results we are looking for, they see their real nature. Complacency sets in. They don't take God seriously, they don't take anything seriously. They feel like they've made, they've arrived. And that's why they're opening rooms for worms, for canker worms and palmer worms, for spiritual destroy, not destroyers. May God help us in Jesus' precious name. Pray. Being overly secured, feel like I have everything I, I want. Now what am I worried for? What am I praying for? <laughs> Be very, very careful. And that's it. That's why you expected to give full dedication to my record. Psalm 73, verse 5 and 6 says, They are not in trouble as other men. Therefore, pride compass, you know, compasses them about as a chain. They feel they have basic food, basic things, you know, basic goodness in life. They don't care. They don't care. So that's when pride is chaining them. They are putting themselves in spiritual chains, which is difficult for them to come out. May you not be part of this gang. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Gang of the pride. May God deliver them from them in Jesus' name, we pray. Being overly affected by exaltation. Some people, because they are praising your chief, your this, you're doing well. Then they feel this thing gets to their head. Then they want people to worship them. They want people to, you know, to begin to bow down to them. Worship the creator, not us creatures. Worship Almighty Creator, not us creatures. We creatures worship the Creator. Give Him the glory. Only God is our glory. So when materialism and all those things enter to when promotion comes, don't expect people to burden to you. That can provoke God to kill you. And God deliver us in Jesus' name. He said, I shall that is with you. My, my glory will I not share with anyone. God's glory belongs to God. Oh my God, I am that I am. Chiuku, the great God. Chiuku. That's what the Hebrews called. Chiuku. Chiuku, the great God. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give that adoration for your beauty, for your life, even for your problems. Give God all the glory. For the scarcity, for the lack, for the delay, for the confusion. Give God all the glory. And it shall be well with you as you're doing this. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Chronicles 26, 15 and 16 says, He was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up. You were helped until you became strong. Now that you look as if you're, you're strong now. Your heart become exalted. You want to be a master, want to be a mistress, want to be lord of the ring, want to be lord of the house, want to be lord of the family. May God deliver you. May God deliver you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. You can't become a queen unless God make you a queen. Yes. You can't become a king unless God made you a king. You can't be celebrated unless God choose that you be celebrated. We are merely tolerated. Yeah? We are being tolerated. May God help us to begin to get the spiritual vaccines that will take care of our social maladies. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Then 11, 11 and 12 says, victory over enemies causes her to be lifted up. So when we think our enemies are having that for us, when we are having victory over them, we think that with our own power. The power comes from Almighty God. The power comes from Jehovah Elohim. The power comes from Jehovah Adonai. The power comes from Jehovah Nisi. The power to excel does not come from you. The power to become that which you, which you are today is not by your own power. The power that you're flying in and out and doing all those things, that you're permitted, that you're married, you're settled, all those things, it doesn't come from you. The power comes from Almighty God. So give Jehovah Elohim that glory. Give him that honor. Give him that adoration. And it shall be well with you in Jesus. Still pray me. People plan, they don't play, and they don't play crash. People have their yacht, their yacht sink. People are killed in their flashy cars. People have their mind, mind their, 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 their minds, you know, blown up. People have kidney, liver, heart problems. People have cancer, different things. People are shot, and so people are poisoned. But God kept you alive and healthy and wealthy today. Thank your God. I've seen multi billionaires in this hosp London hospital. I've visited different hospitals. I've seen multi billionaires they are in, on, the, on the dying bed. They are suffering some, you know, terminal diseases. They've given days and months and weeks to live. And all the wealth in this world cannot save them. And I see some people are homeless. They are sleeping under the bridge with the alcoholic and everything. Nothing is happening to them. They in the other out there. The rich man wish he could give all the millions and billions of pounds and dollars and euros, you know, just to have health. Because their health has been compromised. Their kidney, liver, their blood vessels are polluted. Some of the house suffering blood contamination. May God help us to appreciate 
the benevolence of divine upliftment in our lives, the benevolence of divine grace upon our lives. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. You'll be mocked, you'll be insulted, you'll be shouted at. A lot of people will do a lot of this to provoke you. But let my, this spiritual maturity help you to overcome their insensitivity. Let spiritual maturity help you to overcome external insensitivity. So many people are callous. People are free. People are selfish. They're after their self-interest. But let God give you moderation. Let God give you willingness. Let give you, God give you sanctification to really overcome the bullying of the ignorant and arrogant. Even as you become vibrant to your calling. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. First Timothy 3 verse 6 says, Not a novice, lest be lifted up with pride. He fall. Don't be a novice. Be wise. Be, be wise. Remember the jungle contains those who hunt for the hunters. If you're going out to hunt for glory, for beauty, for love, for joy, whatever you remember that the jungle itself contains those, it contains, you know, entities that hunt for the hunters. May God give us that wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Man. But when you're trying to lift others up, the jungle contains those who want to pull you down. And I keep telling people, you're trying to lift people up, you stay your hand. People that are in the pit of life, pit of poverty, ignorance, arrogance, vengeance, or whatever, error, people are quarreling. You stand your hand to pick them out of that pit. If they lift up their hand, lift them out. Fine. Glory be to God. If they want to drag you into that same pit, put your hand out. Let them perish. Praise the Lord. You cannot force people to take away their karma from them. You can't force people to take away their karma. You try to help honestly, you know, modestly. You extend your hand to help. As many as are willing, lift them out of bondage. Lift them out of ignorance. Lift them out of poverty. Lift them out of their imbecility and their atrocities, out of their sin and their criminality. Lift them out of their darkness. Show them the light. But if they want to put you down where they are, save you. No? Pull your hand out. It's better you save one. Yeah. Than to lose all. But if you can, try as much as you can to save them that are perishing. And God will answer you, your prayers continuously in Jesus' name. Carnal mindedness. Some people that are too intellectual, people that feel that they're too intelligent, they're too brainy. There's nothing you can tell them. They're very judgmental. They feel they know it all. It's pride. Always have a listening ear. No matter how intelligent I am, I will always make a room by the grace of God to listen to those people. You can even learn from people's foolishness. If not, at least you'll be entertained mentally. Always give people listening ear. Let them express themselves. And sometimes, when you don't have anything to say, cut off. Stay away than to say things that provoke people, that turn people the rest of their lives. May Almighty God deliver us. May Almighty God give us wisdom, give us understanding, to begin to appreciate the benevolence of grace, the benevolence of humility. You are nothing without God. You are nothing without the grace of God. You are nobody without the breath of God. The highest you are is the breath of Almighty God. Because when this breath goes, I will give you two or three days, you are smelling cups. You are nobody without God. So give God that grace and your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Pray. Delay is not denial. What will be, will be. Who will be, will be. When will be, will be. Why will be, will be. How will be, will be. Everything will happen at their own right time and place. It's not the person that faster the race that will reach their force. Where the runner reach is where the trekker will reach. Praise the Lord. It will only take time and space. The difference is timing. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Genesis 2, 16 and 17 says, If desiring to be wise, disobey God and eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Disobedience pierces the balloon of your glory. Once you start to sin from late, it will lead to bigger sin. You start with fornication and adultery. Small time. That's a sin. It leads you to be taking pregnancy, especially for women. Once the pregnancy is taken, you're not ready for marriage, brother. The rest is abortion. You end up being a murderer. You've killed. And the Bible says that shall not kill. Say that shall not fornicate an adult. If you fornicate an adult, do into adultery, keep that baby. Some people from that fornication, they go into the next is murder. Then they live with that gift for the rest of their life. Many people are murderers by proxy. You're not the woman, but you gave money for the woman to get abortion. You're a murderer, you're, 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 you're murderer by accessory. You're accessory to the crime. We are murderer by proxy. Yes, the person that does that did that is a murderer. So give the unborn babies chance to come in. Sin begets sin. Be very, very careful. If you give the devil a room in your home, he wants to take a flat. If you give the devil even a space, he wants to take a room. 
If you give a devil a, a little space, want to take a mansion in your life, may God deliver us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. May God deliver us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First Timothy 6, 3 and 4. First Timothy 6, 3 and 4 says, If any man teach otherwise than some doctrine, he is proud and know nothing. Anybody that teach you more than what you are learning now, the person knows nothing. He said you should worship, the, the doctrine says, you shall worship the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your body, with all your soul. Then it shall be well with you. Praise the Lord. Jehovah is God. I am that I am. You shall have no other God beside this Jehovah. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And do unto others as you wish them do unto you. And blessed are the peacemakers. For we shall, at the end of the day, enjoy salvation. Make peace with all men. Without this, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. May God deliver us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we get to our main topic. It says, one in against pride. We should avoid proud boasting. If you should boast, let your boasting be of the Lord. First Samuel 2 verse 3 says, talk no more. Talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Don't boast about materialism, about yourself. Boast about Almighty God. Boast about what God has used you to do. Boast about what God has done for you. Boast about what God is using people around you to do. Don't take the glory. Give Almighty God the glory. Praise the Lord. Because if you thank the king for the one he's done, the king will do greater things for you. In Jesus' name, pray. Proverbs 27 verse 2. Proverbs 27 verse 2 says, Let another man praise thee and not thy own mouth. Don't say this is who I am, this is who I am. Let others say this is who you are. Stop blowing your own trumpet. <laughs> it shall be well with you as learn to humble yourself in Jesus' name. We pray. Yes, you're beautiful, we know. You're tall, we know. You're rich, we know. You're permitted, you're fair. You're, you've got all those things, we know. But let other people speak about who you are. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Second Corinthians 10 verse 18. Second Corinthians 10 verse 18 says, Not he that commended himself and is, is approved. But whom the Lord commanded, let the Lord recommend you. Let the Lord commend you. God commanded Job. Say, Satan, this one is the one after my heart. Go and try. He will not disappoint me. Let God realize. Let God appreciate what you're doing. Let God appreciate your talent and your culture and your mentality and your habit and your attitude. Let, let God commend you. When he commends you, put it in the heart of men. They will see the goodness of God in your life. They will look, they will say, yes, or the truth, this one is from God. That's how it's supposed to be. Don't blow your own trumpet. It's well in Jesus' name. These are the warnings against pride. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 10, 18 says, Not he that commanded himself is approved, but whom the Lord commanded. We shouldn't exalt ourselves. Yeah? Proverbs 25, 6 and 7. Proverbs 25, 6 and 7. The book of Proverbs 25, 6, 6 and 7 says, Put not for thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men. When you come to occasion, don't go to the high table. Humble yourself. Wait to be called up. Some people want to take the front seat. Take the back seat. Wait to be called to the seat. To the you don't get disgraced. It, it's all about what? Exalting yourself beyond your value, beyond your utility. It's good to have aspirations. It's good to be ambitious. But be very, very careful. Ask yourself, this, what I'm desiring? Am I spiritually qualified for this? Can I be able to sustain this? Will this destroy me? Will I destroy this glory? All those things. Ask yourself. I have aspirations. I have endeavors. I have ambitions. But am I spiritually qualified to attend this status? Can I occupy this position? Can I be that powerful wife? Can I be that powerful husband? Can I be this powerful you know, partner in this business? Am I qualified for this? Can I handle the pressure? Thank you. These are the things you need to appreciate. Do self-assessment. The wars of egalitarianism are built with the sweat of the hard working, are built with the sweat of the obedient, the resilient, you know, the tough, those who are fortified with faith, glory, love, joy, beauty, those who have assimilated their purposes and are determined to realize them. May God help us to appreciate all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Luke 14, verse 10. The book of Luke 14, verse 10 says, When thou art bidding, sit down in the lowest room. When you are called upon, don't take go to the highest distance. Can the way to be elevated, way to be shown your place. Don't go and take it because it might not be the place prepared for you. 
God help us in Jesus' name we pray. If we are proud, we are in a dangerous position. Once you make yourself proud and arrogant, you're preparing yourself for crashing. Mm -mm. Yeah. If you're driving, you're speeding so much, you're being proud, you want to destroy yourself. Moderation. Drive the capacity the car or your machinery will take. You're drinking too much, you're smoking, too much, you're overeating. Whatever you do, excess, you know, too much of anything is not good. Especially materialism in social life. Moderation is a key to success. Moderation will elongate your life. Psalm 18, verse 27 says, That God will bring down high looks. God Himself brings down high looks. <laughs> If you think you are proud, God will bring down the high look. May God help us in Jesus' name. Proverbs 15 verse 25 says, The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. If you are proud, that means you're putting, you're putting a caterpillar at the pillars of your own life, of your own glory, of your own anointing, of your own children, of your husband and wife. It's the Bible says, Proverbs 15 verse 25 says, The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. So if you don't want your home to be destroyed, your house to be destroyed, today embrace humility and avoid pride, avoid arrogance in Jesus' name, avoid vengeance in Jesus' name. Because vengeance shows that you are very, very proud, that you have unforgiving spirit. You are forgiven. Why can't you forgive? You are blessed. Why can't you bless? You are released. Why can't you release all that from the prison of your heart? Yes. Vengeance is a sign of arrogance. Yes. And it destroys your munificence. Your moral and mental munificence. It destroys your benevolence. It attacks your spirituality. It erodes your sensitivity. It destroys your sensibility. Vengeance. That's why I say forgive that you may be forgiven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us into temptation. Because when you are not forgiving, you are being led into temptation, steady, steady. But when you forgive, you are protecting yourself from temptations. Because the person you've not forgotten, you remember that you feel sad. You transfer negative energy. But the person that you forgive wants to remember that you let go. Inner peace, it comes. These are natural laws, are natural. Them that refuse to forgive rarely have peace. Forgiveness is very, very vital. Learn to forgive and let go. And God will help us in Jesus' name. No, no, modern, modern diplomacy. But we may not tolerate these teachings. But we Christians, we should forgive as we are enjoined to. And God will take the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we get down to Ecclesiastes 7 verse 16. Be not righteous over much, overly righteous. Why should thou destroy thyself? You see, moderate. Some people are too righteous. Everything in moderation. Let there be moderation. Do the best you can and leave the rest for God. I'm not telling you to go and say no. Don't go and avoid sin, avoid criminality. Some sins are criminal. And some criminalities are sinful as well. But may God deliver us to avoid them in Jesus' name. Now, Jeremiah 48, 25, and 26, and up to 29 says, Exceeding proud, lofty, arrogant, haughty Moabites magnified themselves against the Lord, and we are cut off. Why were the Moabites cut off? They are now making themselves demigods. They exalted themselves. They want to worship these little two idols. They are sister. Are you worshiping your husband? Are you worshiping your brother? Your family status? Are you worshiping your permission? They are brother. Are you worshiping your properties, your talents, your glory, your gift? What are you worshiping? Don't worship the creatures. Worship the creator. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. So by the grace of God, necessary this um, pride, arrogance, and self-righteousness. And humility. In the next topic, we're going to talk about self-righteousness and we'll understand why it's wrong to think that we, we in ourselves are good and righteous. We are going to understand the vanity of self-exaltation and we appreciate the beauty of humility, the utility of humility. May God help us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Oh my ever living God, I thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the courage given to thank you for the simplicity, thank you for the wisdom given to us to trash the topic we have today, to exhaust that which you have asked us to learn today, Papa. Thank you for what we have learned. May they continue to bear fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. Bless our sons and daughters. Bless the viewers of this program. Bless every home that will air this program. 
as long as this program is being aired in every home, every family, every shop, every business, let there be peace of mind for them, in Jesus' name. Let, there, let your grace abound in these homes. Let the good prayers that have been said, these souls be answered. Let your glory visit these homes, these lives, these hearts that are partaking in this blessed, Papa, in this blessed teaching. Let these teachings change our life for better. Let us have hope of salvation. Let us live righteous. Let us obey your sacred spirit. Let us worship you and you alone in truth and in spirit. Let us look after each other. Let us be our brother's keeper. Help us give us the grace to serve you with all our heart, all our body, all our soul, our spirit. Let us use that which you've given to us, including our lives to worship you. And let all the glory go to you in Jesus' name. Bro. Let our church grow. Let the congregations increase. Let people learn more. Let there be more salvation from our church. Let people get their salvation. Let people get the access to their good prayers from our church, Papa, from our teaching. Let the glory go to your name alone. After teaching others how to be better, may we better ourselves and may we all make heaven. May we all be among those who say, Welcome, my children. You have done the deeds of your father. Come to the righteous and powerful and glorious and eternal happy place I prepare for you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For that is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the sea waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup overfloweth. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of Jehovah Elohim forever and ever. Amen. And you that is watching, and you and your family, you and your brothers and sisters, you and your good endeavors, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of Jehovah Elohim forever and ever. Amen. To I am, I am, be all the glory, be all the honor, be all the adoration for our past, present, and future. In Jesus' name we pray. A blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me to worship Almighty God. May this God continuously bless us and forevermore in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See us in church tomorrow. Endeavor to be here on time. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Who us all over the world. God bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The service is ended. God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all.